Catalyst Church, I want you to know something that'll change your life. It will liberate you if you will let it in your heart and not just think it. He carried the weight of the whole world on his shoulders so you wouldn't have to. Catalyst, we have spent too much time, all of us, fighting battles that were not meant for us to fight. You care too much about what other people think. I spent most of my life caring too much about what other people think. Listen to me. He carried the weight of the whole world on his shoulders, shoulders so you wouldn't have to. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what your parents say. It doesn't matter what your spouse says. What matters is Jesus loves you and everything that will ever fulfill you is found in that. Most of the time, people are projecting their crap on you, but they're own insecure. But here's the deal. It doesn't matter if they really think it. It doesn't matter if there's some truth to the way you're behaving. Jesus still loves you and he's got something special and when you figure that out nothing else is going to matter not your insecurities not their, not your childhood not your flaws not your addictions nothing else will matter when you realize how far he went to show you that he loves you and his opinion is all that matters you know I know my kids flaws I know them better than anybody I've only spent uh, a little over five years now I guess well I was their pastor for a lot longer but um I know them as well as anybody now. I know their crowd. I have pissed them off as bad as anybody, and they've hurt me as bad as anybody at times. I'm gonna tell you something. I know them. I know what they're. I know the crap they're capable of, and I know the good things they're capable of. But I tell you one thing: because I know their heart, and because I know who they are, when they don't act like who they are, I know who they are. So it doesn't matter. And that's how Jesus looks at you. You may have acted in poor behavior, but he doesn't see how you acted. He sees what he created in you, and he went to the cross to prove it. And the cross, you're still worth dying for. You've done some dumb things. You've done some negligent things. You have made some mistakes and burned some bridges, and you may have been the toxic one sometimes. But I'm telling you, he knows what he made, and he still knows, and that's all that matters. You're still. 2,000 years later, and no matter the, the fact is, when you finally figure it out, oh my God, all hell's gonna break loose. What they say doesn't matter, what you did won't matter, what you, your marriage that you just came out of that was broken doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is you are still worth it. Right now, Lord, we want to get better. We want to go out of this place better. We want to go out of this place knowing you love us more because at the end of the day, you said loving God and loving your neighbor is all that matters. The law and the prophets hinge on this. So today, we're going to love you more, and we're going to learn how to love others more. We're going to go out of here better. We're going to go out of here better right now. Will you just lift your hands with me? If you want to go out of here better, with the better, because your perspective is what matters. You will never have motivation until you change. You, you will never be able to move in life until you change the way you see what you're dealing with. Lord, right now, change our perspective. Send us out of here pursuing your promise, no matter what our past looks like. You've still got a plan no matter how bad our behavior is. You see your child. You see what you made, not what we've become. And I thank you, Lord. You love us, and that is all that ever will ever matter. So today, give us confidence and love because we will never change our lives until you know how much we, you love us. We're going to go out of here, and we're going to kill it, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Will you give God a round of praise if you believe that? All right. All my guests in here every Sunday, we get awkward. We're going to force you to get awkward to make you feel at home. Uh, fist bump tw uh, 13 people and say you're worth it before you're seated. Go for it. Good morning. I hope it is well with all of you and that y'all have had a great week some fun watching football games our giving tree you guys are amazing y'all did such an amazing amazing job that we were able to add a few more names to it so we had 18 left over but now we have added more family so if you have not had a chance to pick that up please go pick up one you get a cute cute ornament 
as a keepsake for you. Adorable. And if you see how cute that is, does that look good? Anyways, thanks, Emily. Um, and if you are going to bring one of those gifts, we need them. They're going to be little boxes out. 15th? All right. So you get the card, and it'll have the name and everything. Don't wrap them. We're going to have a wrapping party. So if you want to help with the wrapping party, then you can do that. Yay. Okay, so the 15th, December 15th. And if you're helping with food, if you're planning on bringing some food, that's December 21st between 10 and 2. That is a Saturday. So if you're going to bring help with the Christmas meal, that is on Saturday the 21st. So, And that is all. Thank you so much for all that you do and spreading the love. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. If you've, um, I know we've got new people that are new to Catapam. I want to tell you something. If you had not figured it out yet, we're a lot more than Sunday morning. We are a church that's going to love on people in small ways, big. So uh, just so you know the number, we had 70 kids last week. I think we got all the kids provided except for 18. So we're upping it to 80 kids. So what's that add, 28? Go out there, get in. We're going to love big. We're going to love big Christmas. It's about loving, man. It's about really being his hands and feet. Jesus gave us that mission. So if you want to go out there, I, want, I told him last week, I take Garrett now and we go shopping. I want him to see that ministry is not daddy up here preaching. Ministry is doing. Ministry is doing something about it. You can be up here and listen to me preaching. You're like James. He says you're a hearer of the word. The Bible says be a doer of the word. You want the promises of God, do it. Practice it. And that's what happens. So go out there after after church, man. And if and let's, let, let's love on some kids at Christmas. Let's make their Christmas special because that's what Catalyst does. We make things special. Baptism event, December 8th. Y'all know that we've added a little something to it. Santa's coming to Catalyst, December 8th. We got like 22 people already signed up for baptism. And I want to tell you something. If God is putting it on your heart, we're going to talk about it at the end of the message. If God has put it on your heart, it's for a reason. And if it's time, if God's saying your next step because you're taking God's promises seriously is to get in that tank, we're fixing that heater on that engine for a reason. Derek's tried to do it. I think it's beyond him now. He's not going to like it. I said that. We're getting that thing fixed for December 8th. Y'all ready? Going to have a great day. Bring your families. Invite people. We're going to have Christmas pictures with Santa. Instead of a big meal, we're going to have cookies with Santa. We're going to have a party out there in the lobby. We are going to celebrate people taking God seriously and the fact that we can't wait to see what he does. And that's going to be a good day. If you're wanting to get baptized, sign up to Next Steps Outside. Go sign up. We give you a t-shirt. That's enough incentive, but I really want you to do it for the right reason. Um, ushers, will you come forward? Thank you guys for being the most beautiful church ever. I love, I mean, I am honored. I don't deserve it, but I'm grateful that God called me and Darren to be on this platform and to do this. Um, thank you for giving. Thank you for believing in this place. Thank you for investing in it. Not just serving and working your tails off. That's made it beautiful enough of giving and investing in ministry. Because we're doing it, y'all. We're doing it. We're going to keep on doing it. Uh, online, if you're online streaming, um, the text to give's there. If you don't have check, cash, you can text to give. PayPal, I think it's give at imcatalyst.net. If you need to give, thank you for what you do. Uh, we're going to pray and move forward. And as I pray, I want to offer y'all, we got the stream fixed. I'm pretty sure. Right there, I got a thumbs up back there still. We get thumbs up, streams fixed, share the video. We're about to get better together, y'all, even online. We have so much impact online. Lord, we invite you here. As everybody shares the video, we invite you here. We thank you for providing for this place. Thank you for providing for every person and every family in here. I know the holidays are a hard season, not just because of circumstances, but because of money. But we are going to continue to trust you, take steps towards your promise, and invest in people and ourselves. And we're going to see your glory. In Jesus' name, bless the rest of this sermon. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, we got a cheesy title today. When Derek and I, always, thanks, I appreciate that. I want to tell y'all something. Uh, when Derek and I can't think of a better title and we both think it's cheesy and the worst part of the message is the title, you know you got a cheesy title. So I'm going to throw it out there from the beginning because uh, I struggle with uh, the embarrassment of a bad title. Uh, I'm going to preach to you a message. I want to talk to you about the traps of temptation today. And I know it sounds bad and shallow, like I'm going to preach about how to avoid temptation and how to not sin. That's not what I'm going to do because... 
if you know who you are, you will behave better. You don't have to be taught to behave better. Um, so this is going to be a be- it's going to be a better message than the title. I'm sorry for the bad title, but it's all up downhill from here. Uphill wouldn't be good. Trapped by temptation. You know what the worst feeling in the world is? Feeling trapped. The worst feeling where anxiety, where depression, where any digression in your life is feeling trapped. Feeling trapped. It's a terrible feeling when you're in a situation or you're living through a season that you feel trapped. You see no way of winning. You see no way through. You see no way out of. Feeling trapped is a terrible feeling. Matter of fact, it's such a bad feeling that that's the way we manipulate people. We make them feel trapped. If we're trying to manipulate somebody to do something, we make them feel trapped like they have no other options because feeling trapped sucks. Um, if, if, if a lady doesn't want her man to walk away and uh, she gets pregnant because she wants to trap him. Feeling trapped is a terrible situation. We like to trap our kids. We like to tell them, if you do this, then this. Because we think if we can trap them, we can make them behave better. But really, that's not the way it works. Feeling trapped is a terrible thing. Some of you have been sick or you're getting older or you've uh, had some physical ailments and you feel trapped in your own body. Can I tell you something? With all my back issues that I've told you all about where the ticks have been damaging my spine and muscles, the worst part isn't even the pain. It isn't even the fact that I feel my back weakening and y'all see me not lifting and y'all looking. I'm like, I'm just trying to not be humped over walking on the stage by 50. But I'm going to tell you something. The worst part is not the pain and the, and the uh, weakness. The worst part is the tightness. Because sometimes I feel like a prisoner in my own body and it makes me panic. And some of you feel that way. Some of you feel like you're a prisoner and you're trapped in your own mind. You're so insecure that you're living in anxiety and you can barely function day to day. You know why that is? You feel trapped. You feel trapped. You know, um, we we like to say the the, the phrase that you you can't see the forest for the trees. In other words, you're in a situation and you're blinded because you're in the middle of it. You try to get input from somebody outside of it because you're blinded and you don't know what to do. You 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 don't see any way out. You don't know your next step. Actually, that's a true statement, but it's an incomplete statement. You can't see the forest for the trees. The worst part about the forest isn't that it blinds you. It, it, it isn't that it fatigues you or frustrates you. The worst part about the forest is it makes you feel trapped. It makes you feel trapped. And the reason I want to preach this message to you is because the enemy, everything that stands against you in your life, the goal to beat you is to make you feel trapped. The enemy wants to make you feel trapped if the enemy can make you feel trapped and we're going to see this today in scripture if the enemy can trick you into feeling trapped you will get off track and you will damage or destroy your destiny if he can make you feel trapped Catalyst Church a lot of you feel trapped you feel in prison to your problems you feel in prison to your, the people in your life that you don't know how to set boundaries with. You feel in prison to your anxiety and your past and your insecurities. And Satan has caused you to put yourself in a prison that you created because you feel trapped. You are not trapped. You are not trapped, but if you believe you're trapped and you let Satan distract you, eventually you're going to get so tricked into feeling trapped that you're going to completely get off track and miss the promise of God. Catalyst Church, you are not in prison to anything in your life. You may feel like you were in prison, but you were not trapped. Look at your neighbor and say, you ain't trapped. You ain't trapped. And if you believe you're trapped, even if you feel trapped, if you start believing it, you're going to live trapped, and you are going to miss what God wants to do in your life. You have been trapped for too long. You have lived in, 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 in prison for too long. But today, I want you to know you're in process. You're not trapped. You're not in prison. You're in process. And it's time to grow. It's time to grow and to realize that you are liberated and you need to walk out of the jail cell because the jail cell's been open and God is waiting for you to walk out and say, it's time to live for the first time in my life. You're in process. But if Satan can make you feel stuck, He can cause you to do nothing or do a lot of stupid stuff or both because doing nothing is stupid. 
And if he can make you feel stuck, if he can make you feel blinded by the forest, you will do nothing or you will do a lot of stupid stuff. Moses spent 80 years feeling stuck. You remember at 40 years old, he killed a person and he went running off in the desert. Moses, the greatest leader of the Old Testament, if you don't know, he led two million Israelites out of slavery in the most powerful nation in the world. The joker had a stutter. He killed a man. He lived in sorrow, pitiful for for 40 years and, and 80 years old he says God yes I'm not I feel trapped but I'm not going to live trapped he told God I'm, I stutter I can't even lead anybody and at 80 years old he decided to say God I feel trapped but I'm going to do something about it and we see the greatness of Moses because he decided even though I feel trapped I'm not going to live trapped and you're going to find out you're not trapped God told Moses this promise, and it's to all of us. He says, you will be blessed going. If you do what I say, Moses, there is a, there is a premise. There is a condition to every promise of God. Don't think that. He, hey, salvation's free. But the promise of God and what he wants to do in your life, it's, it's not cheap. And it wasn't cheap for Jesus. But I promise you it'll change your life. He told Moses, he said, if you do what I say, you'll be blessed going in and blessed coming out. He said, your enemies will come in one direction and leave seven. Matter of fact, let me tell you how untrapped you are. The Bible teaches that you can't curse what God has blessed. In other words, no matter what your life has looked like, no matter the choices you've made, we live by choices and not chance, 100%. You cannot curse what God has blessed. There is nothing you could do to disqualify you. You got air in your lungs and God loves you and you still got life to live. But let me tell you how Satan works because he knows he can't stop you. Because you cannot curse what God has blessed. What he wants to do is he wants to stop, he wants to use you to stop your story before it starts. Because if he can make you feel stuck and trapped in all your situation and the people who've hurt you and rejected you, if he can make you feel stuck, you will squelch your story, not him. But he knows if you get your stuff together, oh my God, you're you going to give them hell. And today, it's time to see the gospel that's worth living for. Not worth dying miserable and never, never taking God up on his promise. You hear me? You are not trapped, Catalyst Church. And if Satan can make you believe you are, you will stop yourself before you even start living. Or you will stop in the middle and get complacent. Today, Catalyst Church, we are going to stop digging deeper holes for ourselves, and we're going to do something about what God wants to do in your life. We're going to take our situation, our insecurities, our scars, our frustration. We're going to take our disappointment. We're going to take it by the throat, and we're going to take God up on it. Y'all ready? You ready? Because you were not trapped. The gospel is you're free, and it's time to walk in it. It's time to walk in it. No matter what life brings your way, it's time to walk in it. I want to take you to a story that uh, you may have heard in Sunday school. The story in the Old Testament is so much more rich than what you hear in Sunday school. It's the story of Samson. And uh, we hear, and I'll give you the general overview because that's what we're going to cover. And I'm not going to give you details, but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you highlights because I want to bring the principles from his story. It's so beautiful. Samson was given, like you hear in Sunday school, for those who don't know, Samson was given supernatural strength. He was a warrior. He was almost invincible in a lot of ways, or he thought he was after he got some success. Some of you do that too. You start walking in the promise of God, you get a little prideful, and you, you end up falling because you think you're invincible, and you forget that God's the one that calls you. God's the one that fights for you. Um, that's a little side note. Samson got supernatural strength. God gave him conditions to his promise because there's some things in your life that you need to do to protect the promise and plan of God. For example, you get bitter, you're losing it. Somebody hurts you, you let it control you, you're done. Get over it or die miserable trying to prove a point that somebody didn't even know what they were talking about. Let them hurt you. You got choices to make to protect the plan of God. Samson had a condition. God said, you can't shave your head. His, his, his glory was in his hair. There was a couple other things like he couldn't touch a dead body and stuff like that. But Samson was given, he says, from, the, from birth. He was given strength. He killed some. He was a soldier. He was the Philistines, the enemy of Israel in that time. He was their greatest threat. 
and they had to do something about it. So this woman named Delilah, who was a toxic woman, and I'm going to show you today, toxic people are all around you. And Satan is trying to trap you through people, problems, your past. He will trap you. He will try to trick you into feeling trapped however he can. And Satan, Satan used Delilah to um, fatigue and drain him. And I want you to know that you got big dreams, or you at least had big dreams, Catalyst Church. You at least had big dreams. I hope you still have them and have hope in them. Because I want to show you today that if I can, I, if we can learn, we cannot cripple what God is doing in our lives. Because Samson let a Delilah, the story goes, drain him. And he ended up telling her secret, telling his secret. And she sold him into slavery. And he damaged, he should have destroyed his destiny. We're going to see today he damaged it because he didn't have discretion. He got distracted. He felt trapped. And I want to help you. I want to, I want to help you today because I want to help me today. This is for me. This is for all of us because Satan wants to stop you before you start. And if he can trick, trick you into feeling trapped, you will live stuck and you will do stupid stuff and you will damage and destroy what God wants to do. And when you die one day, it's not his fault that you didn't live it. This is the gospel, y'all. It's tough, but it's deep. It's good. It's good. And I'm going to be hard to give today. I'm not going to be hard. I'm never hard for no reason. I'm hard on me up here. Man, I work on these sermons and I know I'm human too. So I want to take you today. I want to, I want to show you how temptation tricks you. I want to show you how it traps you. How it tricks you into being trapped and one day you're going to trap yourself. I want to take you and highlight Samson's life and I want to show you a gospel that is so deep. So we're about to pick up. The first point is this. I usually do single point, one point sermons. Today I'm changing it up. I want to really get deep. These notes in your bullets and take them home. Listen, study, pray over these things because if you'll make some changes, God will really be glorified in your life and you'll see some good days that you never thought you could see. First thing, how temptation traps you. Temptation is persistent. Man, temptation is persistent. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, we're, we're sitting, Samson's, Samson's um, with Delilah. Delilah's giving him some loving. You know, she's like giving him some loving, and he gets it. And she's like, you're not giving me very much, you know. I love you. I love you. Delilah is for Delilah. Delilah is trying to trap him, just like the Philistines are. And Delilah has drained him and drained him and drained him. And in, the, in your Sunday school lessons, you hear that three times that, that, that she tried to betray him, and he told her a lie. He said, braid my hair, uh, bows, bowstring, something else. I can't remember. And on the fourth time, we're told that Samson finally just was so frustrated and drained that he made a terrible decision and told her the secret, and that's how he got his hair cut and sold into slavery. Actually, that's not true. I want to show you it's even worse than that. He's drained. Samson is a threat. I want you to know before I start this, you got promise. Your problems aren't all because of your poor choices. Your problems is you don't attack something that's not a threat. And I want you to know that your problems in your life are because you have potential. Your problems in your life are because you pose a threat. And today we are going to figure out what we're working with and we're going to work it and we're going to go out of here better. Samson was a threat to the Philistines. He was their greatest threat. And they were going to stop at nothing. So they used this toxic woman, Delilah, to drain him and drain him and drain him until he did something so stupid. Here it is. It wasn't just three times. It says she tormented him with her nagging day after day. Not just three times. We read that story, we're like, what a dummy. Didn't he see that she wasn't for him? No, we do the same stuff. People nag us. People are nosy. Situations are persistent. They prod at our faith. They drain us. They chip away at who we are and what we hope for. And Samson was drained. She tormented him with her nagging day after day until he was sick to death of it. Finally, Samson shared his secret with her. This wasn't a three-time thing. This was over and over. He was drained. My hair has never been cut, he confessed, for I was dedicated to Delilah. Excuse, God, I'm way off. For I was dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me, and, if I, would, and I would become as weak as anyone else. He was drained. He was drained. Samson did this dumb thing that almost cost him everything. 
Because he was drained. Because he was drained. That's how the enemy works in your life. That's how temptation works. Because why I'm talking about temptation is because temptation is anything that Satan uses to distract you, make you feel trapped, so that you will trap yourself. That's why we're talking about temptation. Samson was drained. He was the biggest threat. He was completely drained. And when you're drained, you make stupid decisions. I'm going to tell you guys something. People will drain you. You know life's hard enough. Y'all know that, right? Life's hell. I mean, life's hell. I mean, life is hard. But it's even harder when you let people be center stage in your life who aren't for you. Samson made a stupid decision because he gave, a Del- gave Delilah a center stage in his life. And I'm going to tell you something. A lot of us got some Delilahs that don't have the right place in our life. I'm not talking about the opposite sex. I'm talking about Delilahs, downplayers, discouragers, people who text you and call you when they want something, not just to check on you. I'm talking about people in your life that should have been gone three seasons ago and you're still living three seasons ago because God said that you are getting drained because you're letting people downplay who you are and they will drain you. People problems drain you and you're living in insecurities and anxiety because God is saying make a change before you're drained of everything I want to do in your life. Stop! Say, I have people all the time, I don't know how to set boundaries. I don't know how to say no. Listen to me. I figured it out. It took me a long time, and there's a lot of people think I'm a jerk because of it, but I figured it out. I tell, I tell, I tell Derek sometimes, I may be a butthole, but I'm a happy one. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm just, I'm just going to throw this out there. I have learned as pastor in this church that I can't give anything I'm not getting. Your life... Whatever you're sitting in that's, in, that, that's, that's draining you, whatever frustration you're living in, your life is what it is because whatever you're frustrating and lacking is because you're giving something you're not getting. Delilah was for Delilah. She could give him a little loving and tell him she was for him, but she wasn't for him. One night stands, that ain't nothing. A quick hitter, that ain't nothing. Do life with somebody that's for you and build a beautiful life and do life together. You'll find out when you, you'll find single people, wait for who God's got for you. Because if you wait longer, when you wake up next to a person that values you for you, it won't drain you. You'll do life together in every difficult season and it won't shake you. Wait on the plan of God in your life. Samson was drained. Samson was drained. Some of you are drained. You're drained. There's people in your life, there's people, there's places you're going that they may be good to you and do good things for you, but they are not good for you. And you are drained, and you've got to make some some changes because you're drained, and eventually, and probably already, you're going to do something damaging and stupid because you're drained, and you feel trapped, and you're not trapped, you've believed a lie. And Samson was drained. As pastor of this church, I was um Derek and I. It's been almost three. We, we'll celebrate. We got some great plans, y'all. We're gonna put them out there for our three-year birthday in January. It's gonna be amazing. Actually, y'all are gonna like. It's literally gonna be amazing. Um, but um, Angie sent me a a, 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 a snapshot this week. Uh, I think like three years ago this week, we actually put out our website for the first time and announced we were planting a church and and uh, because we did that several months before we launched. And uh, Angie and I were just texting about all the crazy things. That God has done, and I mean, you, we've had a life full of ministry in three years, almost three, under three years. But it's been hell, y'all. Whatever mountaintops you get to see, there's just as lower valleys. Angie was like, "Oh, Angie was like, it's been hard, but man, it's been worth it." And I'm gonna tell you, Derek and I have had to adjust. We're actually making an adjustment now in this new season. Number one, we are sev- we are extremely understaffed, but it's what it is. So some, there's some, we're having some difficult conversations with people, not because we don't love them, because we don't want to go crazy and we want to be our best for Cali. Right. Family, we're having difficult conversations. Like, I probably wasn't nice last night when I was like, I finally put my phone up. I don't, don't want to hear nagging because I'm screaming at this game because this is the best game of the year. On, or the worst. It was the worst yesterday. I, get, I need my time. 
I'm telling y'all. Well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm digressing. Let me, let, me get, let me get back on track. I'm, I've learned that the, the number one thing I'm responsible for is I can't give you what I'm not getting. So that means some mornings I get up at three or four before my phone starts going crazy and I spend my time with God. So those silly, that silly picture I put a couple weeks ago, that was like 3.30 in the morning because that's the only time. And if I don't get my time with him, I can't give you what I don't have. I can't give you what I'm not getting. And a lot of you, because you don't know how to tell people no, because you don't know how to tell people I'm in a different season, and if you're not going with me, you're not going to drag me back. And even though that's a rude conversation sometimes, it's one that your life and future depends on it. I'm spending a little bit more time on this first point. We're going to ride right through the rest of them. I want to tell you something. Like, you need to have some conversations. If you're not with me, then we're going to have to spend a little less time together. And I've learned i got to, number one, spend time with God. I do what I do. Number two, I've learned, and Derek and I have definitely learned in this season where we're so exhausted, sometimes we're going crazy. We know we got to be our best. Uh, the 2018, we exploded as a church. 2019, we've grown, but we've had to catch up with our growth, and it's been miserable. We've gotten more criticism at times, but we figured out if we'll spend time with God and spend time with the people that love us the most, the people that don't love me if I preach a good sermon. Matter of fact, they don't just love me when I preach good. They love me when I come home pissy and start yelling. I'm watching the game. Go to your room if you don't like how loud I'm being, and they still love me. They don't love me for what I can do for them. They love me because they know my heart. If I don't spend time with the people that recharge me and the God that made me, I will be drained. And I've learned that if I can focus on the word of God to present it to y'all and I can digest it myself, I will make it through any season. Derek and I have been through hell and we have made season after season. The mountaintops are because we've been faithful in the moments we didn't feel like we were winning and we didn't let it drain us you got to set boundaries and get people need to give you what they need what you need Amen. not what they want from you and some of your lives are what they are because you're drained and when you're drained you're going to walk you're going to be discouraged you're going to be drained you're going to do something stupid and i've learned it now the reason that satan wants to drain you the reason that temptation is persistent is number 2 this is the whole purpose because temptation pulls you off your path. Samson made a stupid decision because he was exhausted. He gave Delilah information. He didn't use discretion. Some of you need to quit telling people dreams that downplay them every time and discouraging you. He told her and temptation pulled you off your path. Delilah lulled Samson to sleep. Y'all want to know why I'm loud? I'm trying to wake you up. Delilah lulled Samson to sleep with his head in her lap. Ain't that something? Oh. Girl, don't give a crap about him. Girl's trying to make some money by turning in the hero of Israelite army. Some people in your... Satan doesn't care about you. He just knows he can't beat you, so he wants you to beat yourself. Delilah lulls Samson to sleep. And here's what happens when Satan makes you feel trapped. And then she called in a man to shave off seven locks of his hair. In this way, she began to bring him down, and his strength left him. You're so drained that you make decision after decision until you have no strength left. Because you believe the lie. You believe the lie. Can I tell you something? A lot of problems in your life aren't even because of your poor decisions. It's because you left your path. A lot of your relationships, a lot of the choices you make are not because of bad choices, if you go deeper and dig a little bit deeper, it's because at some point you got off your path. You got drained because if Satan can drain you and begin to make you feel trapped, you will get off your path. And if you get off your path, you were walking in the opposite direction of the promise of God. And if you get stuck, you're not going anywhere. Your problems, whatever problems you got, whatever insecurities you're living in, it's really less about what you've been through and what you've done and more about the fact that those things made you walk away from your path. He lulled her, he lulled, she lulled him to sleep. And that was the crippling thing right there. He lost everything that he was gifted in. You got something special to offer this world. 
You may not be a warrior, but you're called to win, and you're winning in some way, and you need to build upon that. You need to be confident. You weren't called to be good at everything, but you're called to kill it in one or two things, every one of you, and you need to not get drained to the place that you get discouraged, do something dumb, and get off your path. Samson got off his path. And before I get too far in this, I want to give you this third point. Because it's coming. I want to go ahead and get you ready for it. Temptation mocks you when you give in. <laughs> Check this out. So they got him. So the Philistines captured him. Satan made him feel trapped enough that he trapped himself. He got drained. So the Philistine captured him and gouged out his eyes. Some of you right now are in seasons of your life. Emotionally, mentally, you feel like you got no eyes. They took him to Gaza where he was bound with bronze chains. This was a celebrated victory of a man who was the biggest threat. I'm telling you, there's somebody in life that you're called to reach. There's something you're called to do. You're called to kill it, and you've got to answer the call and get back on your path. But I'm going to tell you something. They mocked him, and when you get off your path, they will. the people that told you to do the thing that got you off your path will turn on you. They told you, they told you to leave your spouse. They told you you deserve to be happy. You're too old for this. Come on. When you get off and when you become bitter because the divorce was so dirty and, and ugly, they're gonna come back, they're gonna be the one saying, You should just let it go. You should just let it go. You're the one that told me to leave them. You know, we had this family at our old church. You know, I've told y'all some stories over the years that it was an ugly situation. It didn't end well, and it almost took the air out of us starting this church. And there was this family who for several years begged me and Derek to leave the church. Like, they would come to Walmart and tell me, we are holding our breath and only staying so that you will leave and we can go with y'all. And when we did things the right way and we fought for that church and it died, they didn't come with us. But I guarantee you one thing, if we'd have left it and we would have made the decision they were trying to force us to, when they saw the casualties and the people that got hurt because we killed a church to start a church, they would have been the ones telling us, you shouldn't have done that. It will mock you. The people that are giving you bad advice, the people that are draining you, the people that try to tell you to do wrong, when you do it and they see what it does to you, they will be the ones lecturing you when they told you to do it. It will get you off your path and then you get bitter because the people who encourage you to do it will turn on you. It's the way it works. It's the way it works. And when I get to where I'm going in this message, when you overcome it, they won't like you either because they're going to have to look in the mirror when you overcome it and see they didn't. Temptation mocks you when you give in. But here's the worst thing it does. Before I get to the gospel, here's the worst thing it does. It gets you off your path because if you leave your path, you'll lose your purpose. Temptation pulls you off your path. You will become a person when you leave your path eventually after you've been off the path of God for so long. After you've gotten away from the calling and what God has called you to be confident in. When you get away from it for so long, you end up becoming the person that you swore you'd never be. You end up becoming the person that you were terrified of becoming. That daddy that treated you bad and you act just like him, it's because you were pissed off. You got off your path. You left it and you lost your purpose. Because you didn't let it go, you let your love for God go because you're so angry. When you lose your purpose, you end up, you end up going, to, going back and acting like seasons that God saved you from. You go back to places God saved you. You start doing things that God delivered you from 20 years ago. You start going back to people that rejected you. But I want to tell you something. If they rejected you, God had them reject you for a purpose. And if you go back, you're going to lose your path. You're going to get off your path and you're going to lose your purpose. Because you're going back trying to prove a point to people who rejected you. It would be like Samson going back to Delilah. Why did you do that to me? Because Delilah was never for you, Samson. You lose your purpose. You know why you become the spouse you swore you'd never become bitter, treating them impatient? You know why you become the bitter father? It's because 
you had lost your purpose. Because you felt trapped and you got off track and you lost your purpose. You forgot what God created you to be. You forgot who you were. You went back to seasons and things that God saved you from. Y'all ready for the good news? Because this final point is where it's at. All those things that Satan wants to do to make you feel trapped, he can't. Because last point, we're about to drive this home. Temptation doesn't get the last word. It may mock you, and it may mock every mistake you make, but it does not win. It doesn't have to win, Calvin's Church. It doesn't have to win. I want to tell you something. By the way, back to, I, I forgot the scripture. He lost his purpose. And in that, it says that Samson was grinding grain in prison. He was a warrior. Simple version, he was a warrior. He wasn't w supposed to work in prison. But when you lose your purpose, you end up doing stuff you were never meant to do and never doing what you were meant to. Go right there. I'm sorry I didn't make that, make that connection. Like I said, I'm good with single points. I'm too ADD to do this multi-point every week. Temptation doesn't get the last laugh. Check this out. One scripture right here. But before long, he was in prison working. What's that say? His hair began to grow back. Oh, my gosh. I love the way God works. He was in prison. You single parents out there. You raising them kids working 9 to 5 and 5 to 10 and 1 to 3. I'm going to tell you something. You may not see the progress. You're growing. And God's honoring the faithfulness. Single people, you may be 55 before it happens, but you're growing right now at 22. You may not see it, but you're growing. And Samson was in a miserable season. It was what it was. He made a dumb mistake, but his hair was growing back. His glory was coming back. You've been set back for 20 years. You've been living trapped too long. But guess what? You're growing. And today, if you realize you haven't been growing, it's time to grow. It's going to happen one day, one minute, one step. Get out of the bed. Even though you've reaped everybody's bad seeds and yours too, you go after it. It's going to grow. It may grow slowly, but you're going to grow steadily. If you're faithful, oh my, Samson was growing. They ignored him. They said he's a lost cause. That girl's too damaged. She's 37. She's been promiscuous, trading sex for love. But you know what? She's sitting in church and she's growing. She's trying, she's finally figuring out that men are where I, my value comes from. And she's learning, you're growing. Men, you've been immature, you've been living like you were 12 and you're 30, but you know what? You're growing one step at a time. You're growing. Samson was growing in a prison that he created for himself because of bad choices, but he was growing. He was growing. He was growing in a season that he was not happy with. He was growing in a terrible season. You're growing. And your mistakes may mock you, but they are not going to win. Because here's what happened. Some of you may think this is a bad ending, but it's because God's got some principles in it that are for you. <laughs> this is the heart of Samson. It may seem like a bad ending, but it's the one Samson wanted. Samson prayed to the Lord. He's sitting in an arena. He's praying to the Lord. They're mocking him, spitting on him. They got the guy that was their biggest threat. Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, remember me again. Oh God, please strengthen me just one more time. One blow, with one blow, let me pay back the Philistines for the loss of my two eyes. How are you going to pay back Satan for taking away your sight for so long? You've been insecure a long time. You haven't believed in yourself for a long time. But it's time to give the blow to the enemy. He took your eyes, but he hadn't took your faith. Pay back the Philistine. Let me pay him back one more. Give me one more. Give me your glory one more time, even if I have to die. I want to live my destiny. I damaged it, but I want to live it. Even if it costs me my life, I want to live my destiny. Then Samson put his hands on the two center pillars that held up the temple, pushing against them with both hands. He prayed, let me die with the Philistines. And the temple crashed down on the Philistines, rulers, and all the people. Here it is. 
So he killed more people when he died than he had to earn his life. He said, I've lost everything. I'm sitting in the season I'm sitting in because of feeling stuck and believing a lie. I let a girl drain me. I let bitterness control me because you're going to see, and if you read about Samson, he was an angry man who hurt a lot of people. But he said, God, I'm willing to die because I'm at the place that I just want to live my destiny. I've done some stupid things, but I want to do it. And guess what? He, gave, he grew in prison and God gave him his hair back. So guess what? He killed more people after his heart changed. After he almost destroyed his destiny. He died doing it. But the gospel in that Catalyst Church is you're going to kill it more after your mistakes. You're going to kill it more because of your mistakes. You're going to kill it more because of your dysfunctional childhood where your family rejected you and never saw you and nobody took you seriously and you're living in the rejection trying to prove points to people who hurt you. That doesn't matter because you are what God says you are. Quit living in crap. And Samson killed more, accomplishing his destiny after he damaged it than he did in his prowess. You may be 50, 60, 40, 75, 95, but you're going to kill it more when you realize how confident you can be and that you're not trapped. It may mock you, but it does not win if you will not let it win. Catalyst Church, you've been tricked, but the joke is over. The joke is over when you decide for it to be over. And I want to get on this. He was chained to the ground. He trapped himself and he was in a situation where he was trapped. He was in prison to the problems and the people he let drain him. He was trapped. He had two pillars. He had no eyes. He lost everything. He lost his hope and he said, God, one more time. One more time. You're sitting in a season of your life that you're like, this is not what I wanted it to be. It may not be bad, but it's not what you wanted. Some of you like aren't broken right now. You didn't come in here hopeless. Some of you did. Some of you are like, I just, I wanted more, you know. So a lot of people really that aren't unhappy just thought that wholeness and happiness looked better than it did. You know, I've talked to a lot of people that are like, I, I just thought life would be more. Whatever your situation is, you will be like Samson. You're chained. You're chained. Whatever you trap yourself in, you may be in a situation that's a little bit harder to get out of now, but you're not trapped. And if you will say whatever your season, whatever season you're in, if you will say, God, it is what it is. I made some mistakes, but I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm focusing on Jesus. I'm doing this thing. I'm not digging deeper holes. I'm not living in my discouragement. It's not what I wanted. It's not what I wanted it to be. As a matter of fact, some of you become what you were most scared of becoming. The thing you feared the most came upon you. You're living in anxiety. But look, you got the two pillars and God says, be obedient. It is what it is. But it doesn't have to define what it's going to be. And today we're coming back, Catalyst Church. You got a story to tell. You got a story not just to own and not just to live, but to tell. We're going to tell it. We're going to tell it. Will you bow your heads with me? Some of you today came in here and you had little confidence in what God has instilled in you. And I want you to know Jesus loves you. He loves you so much and he is not surprised by what you've done and what's been done to you. But he loves you so much. He's still got a plan. He's still got a promise. But you got to quit stopping yourself. you got to quit squelching what he's trying to do. You've got to quit worrying about what everybody else thinks and what, what everybody else tells you you need to do. You need to do this. No, you need to love and seek Jesus and everything else will handle itself. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and everything else will be added unto you. It's a promise of Jesus. So right now you need to tell him yes. It starts with a decision. You need to come back or maybe you need to come to the throne for the first time. But Jesus says, whosoever will may come. The Bible says you can come boldly to the throne of grace. It doesn't matter what you behave like. Like I said, you're his child. He knows you. He created you and he said he didn't create crap. So right now it's time to come and maybe it's time to come back. It's time to make a decision. And if that's you, we don't, we're not worried about scaring people into heaven. We're worried about giving people confidence to live again. Heaven will take care of itself when you do what Jesus said, when you worry about here. So right now, if you want to say yes to Jesus, will you say this prayer in your heart? 
as I say it aloud. Jesus, it is what it is, but I want you to be Lord of what it's going to be. Change my life. Change my direction. I give you power to use me. Do something special. I want to live my story. However small, however big, I want to be faithful. Thank you for dying for me. And thank you for living for me. If you said that prayer in your heart, as I said it aloud, I want you to throw your hand up and declare it. All hands bowed. Throw your hands up. If you said it, if you said it, decisions all over the room. Look at me. Now look at me. If you made that decision, if God's been probing you, if you've been growing and catalysting you, and it's time to get baptized, don't let anxiety make you stay stuck. We are a family that celebrates and fight together. If God's telling you, if you need to talk to me and ask me about baptism, I'm here. Email me. Call me. Whatever. Facebook message me. We'll talk about it. But if you're ready, it's time to sign up. God is doing things in this church. And it's time to own your story. Do something with it. Will you stand with me? We got one more thing. Do I got some people in the place that you're ready to own your story? Are you ready to do something with your story? Are you ready to do it? No, this was we. We ain't going last week. I said we're a church of worship. Are you ready to do something with your story, Catalyst Church? God's got a story for you to tell, and it's time to live it and experience it, and I promise when you tell it, it's going to be so worth it. When you tell somebody, you may be going through what you went through. I did too, and I came out better than ever. When you get to the place that you're dysfunction, that you're grateful for the rejection, that you're grateful for the trauma, that you're grateful that they turned away on you, that you're grateful that you lived so long insecure because it gave you a better story. Do I got some people that can believe that? If you're going to believe that, I'm going to pray and we're going to sing this song with all we got. It's very easy. It says, God, you lifted me out. God, you lifted me out. And I'll tell all the world. We're going to sing it. Are y'all going to sing it like you mean it? Lord, we are going to sing this with everything we got before we go out of here. We are not trapped. You are our God. You have a plan. We are going to live in triumphal victory. And we are going to see you parade us in the promise of God. We are going to see you do something no matter what life has been. It does not define what it's going to be. We sing this to you in Jesus' name. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor and say, you got a story to tell. Catalyst Church, you got a story to tell. So it's time to go out of there, go out of here and get to living it. Get to living it. Know he loves you and you've got life to live. You hear me? Come back next week. We got an incredible message to send you through Thanksgiving. Love y'all.